What's going on, my movie friends? This is Tommy Knocker, the movie guy, coming at you. And today, I'm going to poke a little fun at myself. Yeah, I went through my movie collection, my DVDs and my Blu-rays. Man, I really wish I would have kept my VHS tapes over the years. I really wish I kept those. But, you know, DVDs came out and Blu-rays, so I took all my VHS tapes, sold them, threw them away. I don't remember what I did with them. It's a damn shame because I had quite a bit. Um, I don't have a big DVD collection, guys. I don't. Um, I kind of gave up buying DVDs over the last few years or so. I have so many apps and streaming services, so it's like, why do I need to keep buying these? I'm not one of those, I have to have the physical copy of every horror movie or whatever movie that comes out. I'm not one of those guys. Uh, I, I pick my spots. Let's just put it that way. I pick my spots. There's certain ones I have to get. I don't need the, the, the finest Blu-ray quality or whatever, all that 4K, whatever the hell you call that stuff. I don't care. Actually, I prefer the VHS tapes. Sometimes if I find an old uh, movie that I used to watch in VHS on YouTube and it has the exact same quality on it, even has the same trailers. You know when you watched a movie over and over again when you were a kid, when you had the physical copy of the tape? And you remember the previews that before the movie. I love that stuff that's on YouTube. Stuff like that. I sometimes prefer the bad quality over the good quality. Depends. I, I'm weird. So I went through my DVD collection. And I picked out 10 of the worst that I thought I, that I owned. And I'm not kidding guys. There's one in here. I don't even remember buying. Not only do I remember not buying it. I don't remember the goddamn movie. Only one. I don't know if I'm just I'm getting older. I just turned. Yeah, my birthday was the other day. I'm a year older now. I've just turned 47. Getting closer to 50. I do not remember this movie. I didn't even bother Googling it or researching it. That's why I'm going to have you guys. When we get to that movie, I'll let you know. Please comment if you think it's a good... I'm going to put it in and watch it. What the hell? I have it. I might as well watch it. I don't remember buying it. We'll get to it. Uh, so, before we get going, please comment, guys. I want to hear some comments. So... What is the worst movie that you own? What do you think is some of the really shit movies that you own? That you bought and you didn't care? Or sometimes things happen. I don't remember. Maybe I went to a garage sale, a lawn sale. You know when you get a big box of movies for a certain price. And then you throw those on the shelf. Maybe that's what happened. I, I'm pretty sure. I have a memory with all these movies buying these. But there's that one I don't not remember. I really don't. So please comment. What, is the, what do you think is the worst movie that you own? I would like to know. So here we go. I did my top 10. No honorable mentions. I don't have that many bad movies. I mean, these are the ones that I bought. So I would hope I don't revere these as ter terrible movies. I'll throw up the scores. I'll throw up the Rotten Tomato score just to see how bad some of these movies are. Okay. Number 10. Let's start this, guys. Here we go. Number 10 is a movie that I love. I don't care. I love this movie. I always have. And man, over the years, my friends used to tease me over liking this movie. I didn't care. As a kid, when I first saw this at the theater as a kid, I had no idea this was connected to Marvel. Not a freaking clue. My number 10 <laughs> is Howard the Duck. Oh yeah, Howard the Duck. I will defend this movie, but if you take my all my movies, this has to be in the top 10. That's why it's so low. I'm putting it on number 10. I can't put it any higher. It's a bad movie. It is. It's cringe. When I when you do rewatch it, you do make uh, those cringe faces. I make that those kind of faces all through Howard the Duck. And I still love it, though. It's so dumb. Um, has it age battling in some spots? Sure. But yeah, this is based on a Marvel movie. It's a lot of fun. Leah Thompson... Yeah, when I was younger watching that, I knew there was a weird scene between the, between the two of them. You know, Howard and uh, Leah Thompson's character. Uh, I didn't realize they actually... Yeah, I... Uh... But anyway, I have the special edition Howard the Duck. And that's another thing, guys. I'm not, like I said, I'm not a big DVD, Blu-ray guy. There's certain movies. The special features on certain movies I will watch, but I don't really care. I do like the making of and the behind the scenes stuff of certain movies. I do like that stuff. But uh, yeah, Howard the Duck comes in. Now, what do you what do you think about Howard the Duck? Do they think they need to bring it back? They they kind of reintroduced Howard Gardens the Galaxy movie. I don't like him again. Just 
he looked terrible. It's cheesy CGI. I believe Seth Green did the voice for like a little bit. Of course, he was CGI, but and he was in the battle scene at the end of Avengers Endgame. He's in the battle at the end. Yep, he's got a big ass gun. He's in it. Okay, coming in next at number nine for worst movies that I own. Saw this at the theater with my friend. I like these kind of movies, but wow, um, it's really painful in some scenes, and uh, the acting is is shit. It's shite. The acting in this is shite. I'm going with Gods of Egypt. Yep, with, I'm not going to pronounce his name, and Gerard Butler and Jeffrey Rush. I actually forgot Jeffrey Rush was in this. I like, hmm, I need to rewatch this crap. Yeah, it's shit, but I liked it anyway. I liked it enough to buy it. You know, most of these movies, I hardly ever buy when they first come out. I won't buy, I won't spend, I can't remember the last time I spent $20 on a movie. I won't do it. I don't care what movie it is. I'll wait, get it used. But Gods of Egypt, guys, is, um, it's, it, yeah, it, I, th there is some fun scenes to be had, there is, but, um, yeah, it, it's the acting in it, it's, it's, it's bad, it's, 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 Gerard Butler, uh, the mannerisms, and, and the main guy, I just got the, I, I got the impression there was just, they didn't want to be there, it was one of those, just give me my paycheck and let's go on with it, but, uh, Gods of Egypt comes in number eight, nine, my number eight shite movie my number eight worst movie that i own um again i enjoyed this movie i enjoyed this movie but it's just missing something every time i watch it well it's been i think i've only watched this a few times but it seems like when i do watch this there's something missing i like the plot i like the story i like i like the character there's just something missing and it's based on another uh, dc character i put number eight i have jonah hex i have jonah hex as my number eight I would love to sit here and tell you all about Jonah Hex, guys. I don't remember a lot about it. John Malkovich is the villain. You got Megan Fox, Josh Brolin. Um, he can speak to the dead. He's got some certain, he's got, there's like a supernatural powers of, to him. There's not a lot I remember about this. I just remember it being that it could be more. That there could be something more. Guys, a lot of these movies aren't bad per se. They're not really that bad per se, but I took all my movies that I owned and I picked the top 10 shittiest ones, and these are the ones. But, um,. Yeah, I always felt there was something missing with Jonah Hex. I don't know. Okay. We're going to get to some horror movies here. <laughs> I got to have some horror. So here's my number seven. It's a box set. I'm not putting the whole box set in there. I have to put this in here because of one movie in particular. Yeah. My number seven, I'm putting in the Leprechaun box set. But it's mainly because of Leprechaun Origins. Yeah, this was bad, guys. Leprechaun Origins was a WWE film. Yep. I want to say this is probably the worst WWE movie that they did. I was excited a little bit at first. I mean, I wanted Warwick Davis back. I like the Leprechaun series. It's fun. But they said they're going to go in a different direction, and they're going to have Hornswoggle. You know, the wrestler, Hornswoggle, he's funny. He was funny in WWE at the time. He had personality. He had charisma. I thought he would have been a perfect addition as a Leprechaun in the Leprechaun series. You know? But then you get that. And I don't understand the choice of this because it has nothing what to do with a leprechaun. That? It doesn't look like a leprechaun. It doesn't talk. It's just a creature. And Hornswoggle has so much personality and charisma. And that's what you decide to do with that? With, with him as that character? And he was going around promoting this movie. I was excited to see him in his personality. And then I saw the trailer and then I saw the movie. I'm like, you wouldn't even know him that was Hornswoggle. It made no sense. That's a, I, I, that's a shame. I would have liked to have seen a proper Leprechaun movie with Hornswoggle doing, you know, the Warwick Davis stuff. Not that. It's just a bad movie overall, though. It's just a bad movie. It's dark. You can't tell what's going on. It's boring. And another reason why I put this on the list, the box set, is uh, Leprechaun Back to the Hood. Leprechaun in the Hood is it's fine. Leprechaun Back to the Hood was so unnecessary and so bad. And I hate to say it, guys, Leprechaun 4 in space, I enjoyed. I enjoyed it. It's wacky. All right, next. Keeping up with that horror theme. My number six worst movie that I own is a two-DVD box set. One of those double features you used to get at Big Lots or Walmart for a few bucks. Hey, like I said, I don't pay big bucks for DVDs. No way in hell. 
So I saw this double feature. I'm like, yeah, I need it to fill out my collection. But man, there's one in here that's just... I don't, even, I don't even really count it as a proper Nightmare on Elm Street movie, but it's in there. So my number six is Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Now, I know Dream Child's on there. Dream Child's not good at all by any means, but I'm putting it on here mainly because of Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. And when I rent, they didn't come to my theater this movie didn't come to my theater. Part four, what a, what a jump off, because part three, Dream Warriors, and part four, Dream uh, Dream Master, was box office gold. I remember going to the theater to see that. It was my first Freddy movie to see, Dream Warriors. Then part four, the line was backed up. It made a lot of money. Dream Child never even came to my theater. This one didn't even come. But it was the final nightmare, supposedly. Freddy's dead. I was excited. And when I finally rented this and watched this, I was I, I can't I did this so many times. It didn't. They didn't even try. They didn't even try. It's not a horror movie. It's it's a comedy. It's a flat out Looney Tunes comedy, guys. Seriously, I'm not exaggerating. Watch Freddy's Dead if you've never seen it. If you haven't seen it in a while, rewatch it. It's a goddamn Looney Tunes cartoon. It's so stupid. You get the stupidest Freddy Krueger lines in the whole movie. He's dressed like the Wicked Witch. I'll get you and your little soul too. He's playing with a power glove. He's playing Nintendo. He's just. It's just silly overall. The, the small town, the the, the, the the scene with Johnny Depp and Roseanne and Tom Arnold, it fell flat. You get crazy adults, a professor going teaching Freddy 101. It was fucking dumb. It was just stupid. And I own it. By the way, a lot of these movies have plastics still on them. I wonder why. I wonder why. Next, we're halfway there. My number five. This is the movie, guys. Are you ready? This is the movie I don't even remember watching ever, let alone buying it. But I do. It stars Jeff Bridges and Julianne Moore. The movie is The Seventh Son. I don't remember this movie. It's so it's got this last seventh son you get ben barnes from the chronicles of narnia i'm going to read this real quick guys torn from his quiet life as a farmhand a daring daring adventure with his battle hard oh he jeff bridges plays a mentor julian moore plays a dark queen it's my kind of movie the army of supernatural assassins it sounds it sounds like my kind of movie that's why i bought it i just think maybe i bought this hearing about it maybe and i just put it aside for now guys comment seventh son Seven Sun, is it worth a watch? Is it worth a watch? I can't put it down. I can't slam it right now. I just put it on there because I'm like, I don't know what this movie is. I don't remember buying it. So, <laughs> Seven Sun. Okay, now this movie, number four, I do remember. I do remember buying this. And it's another one of those, there's some qualities that I do like. But man, rewatching this, it was your typical 2000s shit movie that was just there for the for the actors what i mean by that is the good looking people in the movie the good looking guys in the movie the, the they look like they're from a wb network show the girls in it are all very plastic and um i'm talking about the covenant the covenant yeah this has quite a cast in it from what i remember i don't remember a whole lot you have the oh man the the villain in this is bucky barnes Yep, Sebastian Stan is the bad guy in this. So you got some other good actors in here. Taylor, Taylor Kirsch is in this. Yeah, so the seven, the Covenant guys, <clears throat> group of guys, they're, they're, yeah, they're in a Covenant and they're discovering the older they're getting, they're having more powers, they're getting more powers. And then there's like, there's a fifth member of the, of the Covenant and he's in the town now and it's Sebastian Stan. And like I said, it's bad CGI, it's bad lines, it's, it's basic wooden cardboard acting and, there's nothing really special about it, but I own it. Number three, number three worst movie that I do own. Ah, I hate to do it. I hate to do it because he's my hero. He's my hero. Ah, uh, and I don't care what people say. I enjoyed the Dial of Destiny. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I didn't come out of that theater like, you know. But I liked it, and uh, it, it touched me. You know, I watched it with my son, and yeah, I liked it. I did not, however, like the Crystal Skull. I didn't. I just didn't. I'm not going to just tear it apart, but I hate it for the same reason that most people hate it. I don't know. There's just... 
it was more than then the the bad CGI stuff, and it's it just it just didn't it didn't it didn't have the same it didn't have the magic for me. It just didn't. The, the plot itself, I wasn't buying it. The whole aliens thing was not very really Indiana Jonesish to me. Um, I don't know. Indiana Jones is ridiculous. All the movies have a ridiculous element to it. They're all far fetched stuff, but there's just something about this one. It just didn't touch me here. It just didn't reach my heart. Uh, and the Donald Destiny did. I don't know. Not as good as the first three movies. Don't get me wrong, but I did not mind the Dial of Destiny. But Crystal Skull, no. No. Shia LaBeouf, I won't say he ruined it, but his character was not needed in that. And that it was just stupid cheese. It was so cheese. He finds out he has a son. And the first thing he says is, you're going back to school. <laughs> you're going back to school. Because <laughs> I'm a I'm a teacher, professor. Now I got I to gotta put those stupid dad lines in. I don't know. I didn't like it. Number two. Number two. It's still got plastic on it. And I know why. <laughs> Another horror movie. And this is, this is pretty bad. It's not as bad as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Next Generation, guys. But it's pretty freaking bad anyway. Leatherface. Leatherface. Yep, this is the one with um, Stephen Dorff as the cop. Another, another story of Texas Chainsaw Master that goes off the rails, makes no sense. That's Leatherface in this, guys. Right there. That's Leatherface. Yep, that's him. What um, is that? All through the movie, you think it's that big kid. People on the run, kids on the run from a mental hospital. Yep. And a, and a cop out for revenge, a sheriff his daughter they killed the daughter and then the other family it's just i don't know why it's so hard to do a proper texas chainsaw massacre sequel and get it right but they just they just can't seem to do it they just can't seem to do it so my number one worst dvd the worst movie that i own is also in plastic yes and um until the last one that just came out last year that i watched wow this movie looks like goodfellas compared to that last one but it's still pretty damn bad and i think it's probably one of the worst movies that i own still has plastic on it but uh, i have watched it before i just haven't seen it since i bought it there's no reason to jeepers creepers 3 is yeah i'm gonna say it's my worst movie that i own and i wouldn't sit here and tell you all the things that happened in it but um I'm, i can't <laughs> i guess i was not what i bought this movie I remember. I just remember. I think the main guy is uh, the cop from Monster Squad, his partner, and that's about it. A lot of CGI, man. It seems like all these great horror movies that were once that once was, and they're putting out these fucking. This was this was this like directed DVD? Wasn't Jeepers Creepers three directed DVD? I, I felt it. So, yeah. Even though I I love my DVD collection, I love all my movies. Um, I, th I just thought it'd be fun to pick my ten worst. Just go with it. So there you have it, guys. My top ten worst movies that I own. I would like to hear your worst movies that you own. Give me a shout. All right, Tommy Knocker, the movie guy. Please like and subscribe. Stab that notification bell, and I'll see you soon. See you again soon, guys. Take it easy.